Time travel, is it really possible? Imagine stepping into a machine, and in the blink of an eye, you're standing in ancient Egypt, watching the pyramids being built. Or maybe you leap forward and see the year 3000, cities floating in the sky, humans living on Mars. It sounds like science fiction. But what if I told you time travel isn't just a Hollywood fantasy? That scientists have been seriously exploring it for decades, and they might already know how to make it work. Today, we're diving deep into the science, theories, and possibilities of time travel. And by the end, you might see time itself. Differently. You know, we're all terminally obsessed with time. We try and save it, kill it, bend it, stop it even. You know, time is on my mind today. Humans have always been fascinated by time, this mysterious, invisible force that compels us all, and yet we understand so little. We've pondered over its mysteries, its paradoxes, and its limitations. We've wondered if there's anything we can do to change it, control it, or even cheat it. And in our stories, myths, and legends, we've explored the endless possibilities that lie beyond the boundaries of time. There are countless myths from many cultures about people traveling through time. One such ancient myth comes to us from the Hindu Mahabharata. It's the story of King Kakudmi who lived in the ancient kingdom of Kashi. One day, King Kakudmi was strolling through the forest when he saw a beautiful woman sitting on a nearby tree. He was immediately smitten and went up to her and said, Oh, beautiful woman, I am the king of Kashi and I want to marry you. The woman replied, I'm sorry, but I cannot marry you. I am cursed to marry a king who has not yet been born. The king was taken aback, but he was persistent. He asked the woman, where is this king who is fated to marry you? I will go to him and ask for your hand in marriage. The woman then revealed to the king that her destined husband was an ascetic who lived deep in the forest. Intrigued and determined to break the curse, the king set out to find the ascetic. But when he found him, he realized that it was his own son, King Kakudni had been searching for. Overjoyed, the king immediately asked for his son's hand in marriage and they all lived happily ever after, or did they? That's where the story takes a turn. The king, along with his wife and son, decided to pay a visit to the other realm from where the woman had come. But when they arrived there, they were shocked to find that centuries had passed. The king's wife and son had aged dramatically, while he himself had remained unchanged. The king then realized that he had traveled back in time and had inadvertently broken the curse that was placed on his wife. But now he was faced with the difficult task of trying to fit into a world that had moved on without him. The story of King Kakudmi is a fascinating exploration of the complexities of time travel and its consequences. It raises questions about the nature of time and the butterfly effect. The idea that even the smallest change in the past can have significant consequences in the future. Fast forward to more modern times. We have stories like H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, which introduced us to the concept of time travel and allowed U.S. to explore the idea of going back in time and meeting our ancestors. Then there's the movie Interstellar, which takes us on a mind-bending journey through a wormhole and allows us to see what lies beyond the boundaries of our own universe. Our fascination with time is evident in the countless stories we tell about it. So why does this story, this idea of time travel, fascinate us so much? Well, I think it s because it allows us to do things that we cut and do in real life. Like it gives us the chance to meet our ancestors, to talk to them, to ask them questions that we've always wanted to ask. It gives us the opportunity to apologize for things that we've done or not done, to thank them for the things that they've done for us. It also gives us hope, hope that we can change the course of history, that we can right the wrongs of the past. Or maybe it's just escapism. Maybe we love time travel stories because they take us away from our own problems and allow us to focus on something else for a change. Whatever the reason, one thing is for sure, our fascination with time and time travel will never fade away. Time, it's that thing that's always passing, always moving forward. You can't get it back. At least that's how it seems. But really, our everyday experience of time is just an illusion. A cosmic illusion. When Albert Einstein developed his theory of relativity in the early 20th century, he turned our understanding of the universe on its head. One of his biggest revelations was that time isn't fixed. How we experience time depends on our relative motion. 
That means no matter how fancy your spaceship is, if you're not moving relative to something else, time for you will pass exactly the same as time for us. But here on Earth, we're constantly moving. Everything is constantly moving. We're orbiting the planet, the planet is orbiting the sun, the solar system is hurtling through the galaxy, and the galaxy itself is expanding. All that motion means that time isn't the same for us as it is for someone who is unmoving relative to us. But because those differences are so tiny, we don't notice them in our everyday lives. Einstein's theories predicted that time is intertwined with space to form a kind of fabric called space-time, which can be stretched and compressed by gravity and speed. This is known as time dilation. If you want to see time dilation in action, you don't need to fire up your own spaceship. You just need to look up to the International Space Station, which is orbiting about 340 miles above Earth's surface. Because the ISS is so close to Earth, it's affected by both Earth's gravity and the speed at which it's orbiting the planet. Those two factors combine to slow time down just a bit for the astronauts on board. Specifically, time passes about 17 seconds slower for astronauts on the ISS than it does for people on Earth. That means if you spend a year living on the International Space Station, you would have experienced 17 minutes less time than someone who stayed on Earth. Not a lot but definitely enough for a cosmic time traveler to brag about when they get back to Earth. The difference in time between the ISS and Earth might seem small, but it fits nicely with Einstein's theories about how time dilation should work. As a reminder though, it also shows that time isn't what we think it is. For example, there's no such thing as a universal time, there's only our local time. Each of us has our own local time. It's just that usually we do not realize it because we re not moving relative to each other very fast. But technically speaking, if you were standing still on Earth and I were zooming past you in a spaceship, I wouldn't be experiencing time the way you are. We'd both be experiencing our own local times. And actually, time would be passing faster for me than it would for you. That's because I'd be moving away from Earth's gravity and that would speed up my local time. Conversely, if I were speeding towards Earth, my local time would slow down relative to yours. It's all really confusing, but the bottom line is time isn't the tick-tock on the clock. Time is whatever we collectively agree to call the passage of the universe. Now, you might be wondering why we experience our local times as the same, even though we re-all in different places with different gravitational poles and we all re-all moving through space at different speeds. That because our everyday experience of time is set by things like the rotation of the Earth and the orbit of the Moon, not our individual positions and velocities. But that doesn't mean that those things don't affect our experience of time. They do, it's just that the effects are so spread out over such large distances that we do unnotice them. So, remember, next time you feel like time is slipping through your fingers. It really is slipping through your fingers, and it's happening 17 minutes slower for the astronauts on the International Space Station. If you want to better understand topics like these, you can learn more about the science of time through additional resources. Time is weird. Time is wacky. Time is... well, you get the idea. Time is not what we think it is. And I know that can be frustrating, but at least we have all of human history to comfort us. For most of human history, people thought the world was made of four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. They didn't know about atoms. But today, thanks to the scientific method, we know that the world is made of tiny vibrating strings. So even though time may not be on our side, progress is. Time travel, the very phrase evokes images of sleek spaceships, shimmering wormholes, and the flashing digits of a time machine console. But here's the thing, you don't need a DeLorean, a mad scientist, or a sci-fi blockbuster to prove it's possible. Because according to the laws of physics, the real, hard, tested science, traveling forward in time isn't fantasy. It's reality, at least in principle, and we've already seen it happen in small ways. It all starts with a simple yet mind-bending truth discovered by Albert Einstein in the early 1900s. Time is not fixed. It's not a universal clock ticking away at the same rate for everyone everywhere. Instead, time is elastic. It can speed up or slow down depending on how fast you move or how deep you are in a gravitational field. This phenomenon is called time dilation, and it's one of the strangest consequences of Einstein's theory of relativity. 
Let's start with the first kind, velocity, time dilation. The faster you move through space, the slower you move through time. And we're not talking about slow in a metaphorical way. We mean literally, your seconds become longer compared to someone standing still. Here's a thought experiment. Imagine you board a spaceship capable of traveling at 99.9% .9 the speed of light. You spend just five years on this journey. When you return to Earth, you might find that 50 years have passed here. Your friends are older, the technology has advanced, cities have changed, and you're a living relic from a different era, but for you, only half a decade has gone by. Now, this isn't just theoretical dreaming. We have real-world evidence that time dilation is a real effect. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station actually experience it every single day because they're orbiting the Earth at 7.66 kilometers per second, their onboard clocks tick ever so slightly slower than clocks on the ground. Over a six-month mission, the difference might be just a fraction of a second, but it's measurable. And it's exactly what relativity predicts. In fact, one of the most famous demonstrations of this was the twin experiment with astronaut Scott Kelly. Scott spent nearly a full year in space, while his identical twin mark stayed on Earth, when Scott returned, precise measurements confirmed tiny but real differences in how their bodies had aged. Not because space magically changes you, but because time itself ran differently for him. This isn't some abstract theory. It impacts our daily lives in tangible ways. Your phone's GPS system relies on these same principles. GPS satellites orbit high above the Earth, moving fast and experiencing less gravity. According to relativity, this makes their onboard atomic clocks run slightly faster than clocks on Earth, about 38 microseconds faster per day. It might not sound like much, but if engineers didn't correct for this difference, GPS locations would be off by several kilometers within just a day or two. That means every time you open Google Maps or navigate to a coffee shop, you're relying on corrections for the weird, elastic nature of time. Now imagine taking this to the extreme. What would it be like to intentionally travel into the far future? Picture this, the year is 2080, and humanity has developed engines powerful enough to accelerate a ship to near light speeds. You and a small crew set out on a research mission to a distant star, just five light years away. Because of your incredible velocity, the journey, from your perspective, lasts only 10 years round trip. But when you return to Earth, 60 years have passed. Your children are elderly, your home city is unrecognizable. Nations have risen and fallen. For you, it's like stepping through a doorway into tomorrow, except that tomorrow is an entirely new world. This type of time travel isn't just speed-based. Gravity can also bend time, something called gravitational time dilation. The stronger the gravitational field you're in, the slower time passes for you compared to someone farther away. This means if you lived near a black hole where gravity is unimaginably intense, you could experience hours while years pass elsewhere. This idea was famously visualized in the movie Interstellar, where astronauts land on a planet close to a black hole and a single hour for them equals seven years back on Earth. While the movie was fiction, the science was spot on, relativity predicts exactly that kind of time warp. Think about what this means for the future of humanity if we ever master near-light travel, we could send explorers on journeys where they personally age. Just a few years while centuries pass on Earth is the ultimate ticket to see the far future, to skip ahead in history without the slow wait. But here's the bittersweet part. Time travel to the future is a one-way street. Once you jump ahead, you can't come back to where you started. The past is locked, the present is gone, and you can only move forward from wherever or whenever you land. And in a way, we're all doing this already. Right now, you're traveling into the future at the normal rate of one second per second. Every heartbeat, every blink is carrying you forward through time. The only difference is we're all moving together, more or less at the same pace. But the physics of relativity tells us it doesn't have to be that way. With the right technology, we could bend time itself to our will. So the next time you look up at the night sky and see a distant star, Remember, that star's light might have left before humans even existed. Space and time are deeply connected, and by moving through one, we can change our path through the other. 
Traveling to the future is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when we decide to make it happen. And when we do, the world we return to may be unrecognizable. But that's the strange, beautiful price of becoming a true time traveler. From the moment we entered the cosmic stage, humans have been wanderers. Our ancestors spread across the globe chasing better lives. Today, we conquer the digital cosmos too, with data streaming across fiber optic networks, zipping through Wi-Fi waves and launching into outer space. For over 50 years, NASA has been exploring the solar system's farthest reaches. With rovers on Mars and even a probe at the Sun, our robotic explorers roam farther than any human could hope to go alone. But they need constant communication. Signals sent from Earth take precious minutes to reach them and the robots can only respond in kind. But what if we could send messages instantly across the solar system? What if we could talk to probes on Pluto as if they were next door? Scientists have a plan to make interstellar communication almost instantaneous by beaming signals to a massive telescope array orbiting the L1 Lagrange point. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss an upload. And thanks for learning with us.